Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of StreakWave Webinars. My name is Richard Bernhardt, and I'll be your host for today. We thank you for coming. Uh, we have a great presentation for you today about a product line called MetaGeek. Uh, MetaGeek is your introduction to spectrum and packet analysis, and they're going to talk to you about all of the different aspects of the tools that they have that can make your life easier um, in the deployment of Wi-Fi. Um, we'll begin shortly, but I want to introduce our guests today. First, joining us from MetaGeek is Lyell Ubaraga Rogers. She's the channel manager for MetaGeek, and she'll be going through the presentation, and if time permits, we'll uh, present a few open uh, demonstrations of the product so that you can see how they operate. Also with us today is Josh Kwok. He's the chief operating officer of, uh, excuse me, chief technology officer of uh, Streakwave Wireless. Streakwave Wireless is your distributor for wireless products um, as well as MetaGeek, and we're looking forward to working with you throughout this whole process. If you have questions along this presentation, there is an electronic question section on the dashboard of your uh, GoToWebinar. Uh, please type them in all the way through the webinar. At any time you want to, type them in there. We'll have a Q&A session at the end. I may throw in a few questions as we go. But please remember that we want to hear your questions. And if we don't, for some reason or other, get to you during the presentation, we will definitely get with you after the presentation. But we encourage you to put your questions in there so we can ask them. It's my pleasure at this point. Uh, to introduce Lyell Ubaraga Rogers, who's the channel manager for MetaGeek. Welcome, Lyell, and you're on for your presentation. We look forward to it. Thanks very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Richard said, I'm Lyell. I am the, in channel sales at MetaGeek. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give you a quick intro of what we do, why we're here, how we can help make your wireless life easier. A quick agenda to let you know what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the need for the, re the robust Wi-Fi tool set. Why you actually need tools for Wi-Fi now. You can't just um, install where you think it would be best and, and, and use a lot of guesswork. We, you need some verifiable tools, just like we do for Wired. Wi-Fi needs that now. Talk quickly about the MediGeek company background. Um, some, some mission critical applications of Wi-Fi. Very quick refresher on Wi-Fi basics, just to get everyone oriented uh, about where MetaGeek is coming from uh, with our Wi-Fi tools. Types of interference and how MetaGeek products can mitigate that. And then um, a quick review of MetaGeek products. And I was going to do the, the demo in the middle of the presentation. I think I might save it for the end now, um, just in case we run out of time. I really want to go over how MetaGeek products uh, fit into different different markets and different use cases for customers. So first, why is there a need for MetaGeek products? Well, during the early days of Wi-Fi, uh, people installing Wi-Fi were the people that were your wired guys, your wired installers. And they had tools to test their wired connection. They would you know, pull wire through buildings. Uh, then they plug in a cable tester, check the health of the connection. In the beginning of uh, the early days of Wi-Fi, it was kind of just an extra bonus feature. It was this magical thing that would go through the air, and people plugged it in wherever it was convenient, wherever there was a jack. Um, performance was kind of a get-what-you-get type thing, and wired was, was the, real, the real workhorse of what was going on. Um, and that was the one that needed 100% uptime, so people invested tools in wired, or invested testing tools on the wired side. Now that Wi-Fi is more than just a bonus feature that you know you get what you get, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, we, need, we really need tools to test Wi-Fi. It's just as important, sometimes in some deployments, it's more important than a wired connection, depending on where you're at. You, you're can't, you can't just guess about what's in the air anymore and hope that it works. I mean, Wi-Fi does seem pretty magical, but there's a science behind it, and we've, we've harnessed um, the tools that you that look at that exact science and visualize it for you in a, in a language that humans can understand because we can't see invisible air, but we can measure the frequencies, um, that, and that's what we do. So to be taken seriously nowadays in the Wi-Fi world, you really do need tools that you're not guessing, you're installing and verifying your installation with a legitimate tool and deliverables like reports. This is where MediGeek comes in. 
Um, so the reason I have a cable tester up there is the our flagship product, which is the Wi-Fi, uh, we're now on the DBX iteration. Um, and Wi-Fi Plus Channelizer is pretty much analogous to the cable tester of the wired world. The wired installers, they, they run wire, check it with a cable tester. Our wireless installers, they install a, a WLAN and they check it with Wi-Fi. So quick overview of MetaGeek Bio, or MetaGeek the company. We were founded in 2005 by Ryan Woodings uh, here in Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho is our headquarters and our only physical office. We're privately held LLC. Uh, Sales, we have a distribution model. We sell direct. Uh, we sell direct domestically and internationally. 51 resellers and distributors worldwide. Our primary markets are really, this is kind of a joke, because really our, our markets are anyone with Wi-Fi issues, which is almost everyone nowadays. Uh, we sell to the healthcare industry. We sell to installers. We sell to VARs. We sell to prosumers, so the home users, we sell to small medium businesses. Coffee shops need their Wi-Fi just as bad, if not more, because it's you know it's an expectation that coffee shops have Wi-Fi. Some little pictures to match our story. Um, on the left is Ryan, our founder, on the day that his first Wi-Spy shipped. Uh, Ryan created the Wi-Spy when he was he was working on some other short range wireless products and you know needed to look at the spectrum. And he got really tired of rolling an expensive tabletop spectrum analyzer into his lab on a rolling cart. He had to share it with the company. He had to check it out, uh, you know, fight over it with your employees. So he's like, well, why don't we just make a small portable one? So he made the first Wi-Spy, which is that little tiny USB that says Wi-Spy <laughs> in green on the screen. Um, right behind it, the screenshot is, chan is the very first version of Channelizer. It was pretty revolutionary at the time because it was uh, way more affordable than the tabletop spectrum analyzers costing thousands of dollars. It was USB and it was PC based so you could walk around anywhere with it. Didn't have to be plugged into anything, just walk your laptop around. And that's how it remains today. We have come a long way since then. Uh, MetaGeek is, is still focused on building a small company that stays awesome. One of our, our taglines is awesomeness happens here. Uh, we're very active in the tech community in Boise and uh, the community in general. We're a partner with Boise State University in their computer science department. We participate in local awards, always striving to um, involve the community in our company um, and involve customers in, in our company. We, we build products based on not necessarily what we want to build, although that's important too. We want to build products that are cool, but we build products based on what we have heard and gathered that Wi-Fi wi professionals, like you guys, need. So we do usability tests. We value customer feedback very, very highly. Keep our company small on purpose so we kind of maintain that, um, that small company vibe that really listens to our customers and we're here for our customers. So moving on, why Wi-Fi? What have we been doing since 2005? Uh, Wi-Fi, like I talked about, in the first slide, Wi-Fi is business critical in many, many uh, applications. Some things that you, these are just kind of to, to jog your memory thinking about the things that Wi-Fi affects. Uh, your reputation can suffer if your Wi-Fi network is down. If you're a small coffee shop and your Wi-Fi is not working, someone will go elsewhere. Um, efficiency and effectiveness, if, you're, if you have an RTLS system in a hospital and you have some, some asset tracking software that relies on Wi-Fi, you can't find this important piece of medical equipment, you know, a patient may suffer or at the very least there's going to be you know, a, a chaotic moment. Customer satisfaction, if you're an installer, you need to make sure that your installs go well and that your Wi-Fi uh, installation is backed up by a report that you can stand behind, uh, snapshots explaining uh, what's going on with the customer or what's going on to the customer, but you can't just do that vaguely. You need uh, some software that explains exactly what's going on. Customers that don't think you're doing a good job with Wi-Fi are going to take their business elsewhere, of course. And efficiency, that's what everyone wants. We, a lot of our business transactions rely on Wi-Fi. Uh, so Wi-Fi is down. Your, uh, your efficiency goes down and productivity goes down. 
So quickly now, um, I'll just orient everybody with uh, the, the, the science behind Wi-Fi and why MetaGeek makes these products, essentially. We've reviewed why we need Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi toolkit. Let's do a little quick refresher. Um, Wi-Fi is half duplex, keep in mind. So it's a one-way conversation. If a wired connection is a two-lane highway, a wire, wire lift, Wi-Fi connection is a one-lane highway where you know someone has to pull over, wait for the other car to pass. So you see here the, the hilarious graphic with the no sign. It's not a two-way. You, the client needs to transmit to the AP. The AP has to stop and listen and then acknowledge the transmission. So you have this data ACK, data ACK, data ACK, back and forth. Of course, this is on a very small scale, nanoseconds. Um, but when there are 100 devices trying to connect, um, and you know each user is carrying around a laptop, maybe they have an iPad in their bag, maybe they have an iPhone, three to five devices with them or in their home, and they're all trying to talk using this half-duplex, very polite method, you can see where um, it starts to get pretty crowded. So next, briefly talk about the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz ranges of Wi-Fi. Most Wi-Fi today is dual band, especially in the United States. We have a lot of dual band. In other parts of the world with older technologies, a lot of the world is still on 2.4 gigahertz. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there's an advantage of having both types of networks deployed. Uh, most of the world is still on 2.4 gigahertz, as I said, um, but 5 is you know this this wide open westward expansion type thing. There's there's a whole huge band, um, much greater range, greater performance since um, you're at, at you're, the waves are vibrating at five you know billion hertz, um, but it does have a lower indoor range. So it's great for indoor deployments. Um, if you need outdoor deployments, you're going to want to layer that with a 2.4 gigahertz deployment. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz band was actually what you know what allowed Medigate to go into business because the band is super super crowded. Lots of things are interfering with each other, uh, so we created software to let you look into that. Types of interference really quickly. You'll see this this uh, come up in Channelizer later on. I just wanted to introduce you to types. Adjacent channel interference, this is when uh, access points are on overlapping channels, especially in the, well, actually only in the 2.4 gigahertz band, you'll see these overlapping channels. Because the band is so narrow, you only have three non-overlapping channels, which are 1, 6, and 11. If you have an AP on any channel besides those, uh, in different countries, you can sometimes get away on channel 14, but let's we'll, we'll talk about the US just for uh, purposes of example. If you're not on 1, 6, or 11, um, you're going to be overlapping with someone. So it's, I, I like to call it the good neighbor policy. It's better for your network and everyone around you if you're on the one, channels 1, 6, or 11. Um, jumping to the very rightmost type of interference, co-channel interference, this is the lesser of all the evils. Um, channel 11 in this example, two APs are on channel 11. You're getting a little bit of interference because they're trying to transmit over each other but they're at least speaking the same language, for lack of a better word. In this case, it's the language of channel 11. So they know, they're both communicating with the AP on channel 11, and they know how to be polite. So it's at least a polite conversation, even if it's slower. If it's adjacent channel interference, they're not speaking the same language, and they're trying to talk over each other in different languages, which creates a lot of interference. The third kind, non-Wi-Fi, uh, Non-Wi-Fi does not speak Wi-Fi language at all. This is something like a Bluetooth transmitter or an Xbox or a baby monitor or a microwave, something that transmits in the same band as your access point but is not Wi-Fi. It's just going to talk, and it doesn't care what else is going on. So that's the kind of interference you definitely want to avoid. Uh, another slide kind of explaining the types of interference. Uh, like I mentioned, open channel. Open channel is obviously the best, and you can achieve that in 5 gigahertz. Because there's so many channels available, the band is so much wider, uh, especially if you're in an environment that not a lot of other people are running 5 gigahertz, you can get an open channel. In the 2.4 gigahertz band, you're almost never going to get that. Um, so co-channel is better. That's the good neighbor policy, 1, 6, or 11. Adjacent channel is the worst kind. You don't want to be a bad neighbor and be on a neighboring channel that overlaps. Uh, interference, the non-Wi-Fi interference at the very bottom, 
basically the method of avoiding that. If you don't have control of the non-Wi-Fi interferer that's, that's interfering with your signal, the best you can do is look at it in Channelizer and then avoid it. So switch to a different channel that it's not close to. So here's a spectral example of non-Wi-Fi interference and what you would do to avoid it. Screenshot on the right is Channelizer. Um, and to see this interference at all, or to fix this interference at all, or to avoid it, you need to be able to see it. Your Wi-Fi network card won't let you see non-Wi-Fi interference. It can only understand Wi-Fi at the protocol level. So it can see the MAC addresses of the APs around you, but it can't see something, you know, a, a microwave doesn't have a MAC address. So your Wi-Fi card is not going to see that. That's why you need an additional tool, a spectrum analyzer, to allow you to actually see this stuff. So if you can see the, uh, the MetaGeek AP is that kind of tabletop shape on channel 5 in this example. Um, there's a transmitter between channels 3 and 4. So if we see that and we see that the transmitter is overlaying on the AP, then we need to go ahead and change the channel and get away from that or if we have control over the transmitter, uh, removing that transmitter or turning it down would be the best, but we don't always have that option. The usual suspects of non-Wi-Fi interference. So these are some, some devices that cause it, especially in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And with increasing amounts of smart technology, you've probably heard the Internet of Things in the average home and office, you have many more potential sources of interference. Uh, you know, home thermostat, digital camera, Wi-Fi smart printer, uh, automated home products like the fan, baby monitors. Uh, it just really highlights the need for uh, being able to look into the spectrum, not only to see Wi-Fi interference, but to see non-Wi-Fi. So here's where MetaGeek products come in. And I'll um, come back to this slide when I do the live demo. MetaGeek, we, we have three product lines. Um, the top is Insider Office and Wi-Fi Mini. This is for your small to medium businesses that just want, maybe Wi-Fi isn't something that they do all day, every day. They only want to look at it when uh, something's wrong and their boss starts complaining to them that the Wi-Fi is not working. It gives you a quick look into your Wi-Fi environment, either in the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bands. This uses your Wi-Fi network card. Um, and it uses Wi-Fi Mini, that tiny little dongle that looks like a, a wireless mouse dongle. Plug that in, gives you a little bit of spectrum data to show you some obvious sources of interference and to help you calculate channel health. So quick spot check, what's going on, pick the right channel for your AP, get on with your day. The next one, if you want a deeper dive into wireless layer one, which is the physical layer or the RF layer, uh, we have the Wi-Spy DBX and 2.4X. DBX means dual band, 2.4, it means 2.4 band. Uh, dual band will scan the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, and it's the one that we usually demo and use just because you have more options. You can scan 2.4 or 5, whereas the 2.4X only scans 2.4. Um, Channelizer software, these two go together, Wi-Spy and Channelizer a two peas in a pod. Channelizer allows you to see the data that the Wi-Fi is scanning um, and really lets you go a lot deeper into the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz spectrums. Um, let's, it lets you navigate by time, and we'll get into this uh, later, but uh, gives you just really a, a good picture of what's going on and more stats about um, each AP and each type of interferer. Um, additional products for use with Channelizer that really round out your toolkit. Uh, we sell Channelizer at a, at a base price um, with Wi-Spy. And then if you want to add on even more, we have additional software accessories. We did that on purpose um, just because we don't want people you know, buying stuff that they don't need. We want to be very fair. So we offer this baseline product of Channelizer and Wi-Spy. And then if you need other stuff like Report Builder, which I'll talk about, if you need to connect to Cisco Clean Air access points, if you need to customize the, uh, the hardware suite settings of your Wi-Spy, there's accessories for all of those. If you need to find a mystery device, there's the uh, directional antenna. Um, so I'll talk about those accessories really quickly, and then in, a, in the demo I'll mention them again. Uh, the Report Builder accessory is one that you'll be seeing a lot in the demo, and that's 
a really, really important deliverable for any use case of Y-SPY and Channelizer. Uh, Report Builder takes uh, basically the, the blocks um, and the different panes of Channelizer, P-A-N-E-S, panes of Channelizer, uh, and puts them into a deliverable report with pre-filled text explaining what is going on in each section. So I'll talk about later the density view, the waterfall view, the networks table, the channels table. You can fill all of these blocks into Report Builder. And it, uh, you can also add in your custom text. Like if you see a, an interferer, you select it, add it to your report block. And you can add in, hey, ABC client, just so you know, this is what your wireless security camera was doing to your spectrum at that point. We recommend that you remove it or uh, move it somewhere else, etc. It gives the client and, and you and anyone else in your company, if you want to document this for your own records, it just gives you, it, give, it gives them in plain English what's going on in the spectrum because not everyone knows how to read a spectrogram. Uh, so that's Report Builder Accessory. You can also, if you're running Cisco gear, you can connect to Cisco Clean Air Access Points um, using the Cisco Clean Air Software Accessory. It's just a feature unlock within Channelizer. You can purchase the licenses from Streakwave. You can buy it right at the same time as Channelizer or add on the accessory later. Uh, it allows you to connect and load CCF files into Channelizer and then get a, get a look at the spectrum from your access point perspective instead of Y-SPY. So you can do Y-SPY, you can use the Y-SPY hardware for uh, walking around doing an on-site survey or if you have a client in a different state or a different country that is run, that's deploying Cisco, just connect to their access point and get a look at their spectrum and then you can tell them what's going on because you're already trained in Channelizer and maybe they're not. A device finder accessory. Device Finder is a directional antenna, and you can actually see a picture of that in the little screenshot to the right of the text in this slide. It's just a it's a patch antenna that a directional antenna that screws onto the top of Wi-Fi. Um, and there's a Device Finder tab within Channelizer software as well. So if you have your Device Finder patch antenna plugged into your Wi-Fi and you go to the Device Finder tab, you can uh, basically walk around with your laptop and find mystery devices based on the frequency that you know you're looking for. And once you hone, you hone in on, on that frequency, you know what you're looking for, then you just watch the line rise and fall in the device finder tracking tab. If, you're, if the line is rising, you're getting closer to that mystery device. If the line's falling, you're getting further from it. Nice visual way of, of tracking down uh, maybe not necessarily sanctioned sources of interference. Uh, the last line of products, the uh, IPA, um, is packet analysis. So whereas Wi-Spy and Channelizer looked at the physical layer, the RF layer, IPA looks at actually the packet layer. So it basically, the, the long and the short of it is that you can get a good look into the airtime. What's happening with all of the APs in your area? What's happening with the ESS IDs? And then you can drill down further into the SSIDs, client devices, subframe types, um, find out if there's high retransmits, find out if you know, not enough data is getting through, if there's too much overhead. It just clues you in, but very visually, because it's color coded, and once you learn the, the colors of the subframe types, you'll be able to take one look at the multi-layered pie chart and see, oh, that's a top talker, oh, that's a legacy device. Um, Great way to, to get an insight on, into your uh, airtime. So those are the three product lines. Um, next, I will talk about, uh, we've talked about Wi-Fi interference, three MediGeek products. Next, I'll talk about how they can help each uh, type of user, essentially. And I'm guessing with uh, this many attendees, hopefully we'll have some of each type of user in, in attendance in this webinar. So we'll start with the small, medium business network admin. Uh, this guy may or may not work in wireless every day. Um, like I was talking about in the insider office, he probably doesn't care that much about wireless unless it's broken. Because he probably is also responsible for the printer and for installing uh, you know, Windows 8, on all, upgrading all of the computers in the office to Windows 8, and taking care of printer jams. He doesn't have a lot of time to spend 
necessarily nerding out on Wi-Fi like we do. <laughs> so inside our office and mini is a good, good quick solution for him or her to see the neighboring APs, uh, pick the right channel for the AP, because uh, our tagline that I like, my mantra that I like to repeat about Insider Office is that you're better than auto channel selection. Don't just let your AP select its own channel. And you guys attending the webinar know this, but this, the SMB may not. Uh, pick the right channel. Uh, use that Wi-Fi Mini to get a little bit of spectrum insight um, and help you establish channel health, if you should be on this channel or if you should be on a different one of the non-overlapping channels. And it will also give um, this, this SMB network admin some expert tips and, and recommendations at the very end in the, in the recommendations or analyze tab. If this person wants to look deeper, though, Wi-Fi and Channelizer still offers them quite a bit of value. Uh, it, it depends on you know, how many networks they're running. Maybe they're a medium business and not a small. And they, need to, they have some really nasty source of interference that's causing them to drop signals. They need to take a look with Wi-Fi DBX and Channelizer. It allows them to get deeper into the spectrum, like I was saying, and really identify what devices are causing interference. Um, and if, if, if he has control over it, remove them or move them. If he doesn't have control over it, he'll at least know to, to switch to a different channel to avoid them. Next user type is the home automation or custom installer. This person, in my mind, is really looking at the, you know, they want all of the wireless technologies in the custom home to play nice with each other. With Wi-Fi, since Wi-Fi doesn't care if, if it, see, it, it can see Wi-Fi stuff and it can see non-Wi-Fi stuff, and it doesn't care what it is, that's the beauty of it. It just delivers you raw spectrum data. Um, and with that, with your USB, um, your wireless NIC, you can get additional intelligence about the APs, but if you have something that's not Wi-Fi, like Zigbee, um, Wi-Fi will still let you see that. Um, you can identify interference with Zigbee, uh, Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi, how Zigbee and Wi-Fi are interacting together, and just allow you to really plan for how they'll, they'll play nice together. Next use case is enterprise IT. And education. So these are the people that um, maybe they maybe their job is is purely Wi-Fi. Maybe their job is not wi is not just Wi-Fi. I have a, a friend over at a liberal arts college about an, a half hour west of Boise, um, and he's in charge of I think security, wireless, uh, system upgrades, and all kinds of stuff are part of his job. Um, he doesn't really have time to go in and figure all this stuff out with a spectrum, with a normal spectrum analyzer. But with Wi-Spy, he can see the problems really quickly since it's color-coded. IPA is similarly color-coded. Um, he doesn't have to spend a lot of time learning it. See the problems quickly, spot check, oh, there's an interferer here, let me switch my IP to a different channel. And the report builder, as I was talking about that, that software accessory that allows you to export to uh, PDF, is really important for him or her as well because this, pro this same problem, you know, maybe a, a student is complaining in the dorm that their signal is dropping and we know that they're, you know, every student has a microwave in their dorm. So if this person goes in there, does a quick survey, finds out, oh, there's a microwave, this is what's wrong, hands either the student or maybe the dorm director or another person in the IT department, hands them a report showing them exactly what it is You've, I mean, you've established your baseline, and you said this is what it is. You're going to have to move your microwave. Um, you know, don't complain to me about the Wi-Fi. I'm doing the best I can based on this microwave being here. It's kind of a, a CYA for, for um, this this type of user, the education or enterprise IT. Enterprise IT. I, um, my wording for this is, you know, any kind of campus environment, whether it's an actual education campus or an enterprise campus. They'll use IPA to, big, big one, especially in education, to detect BYOD devices. Um, in an in a, uh, enterprise or campus education tech's dream world, there would be no BYOD devices. <laughs> there would just be laptops and everything would be clear and there would be no interference. That's not real life. So we, he looks at IPA to see 
if there are any legacy devices taking up unnecessary airtime, um, monitor Wi-Fi overhead, make sure that there's not too many uh, overhead management control packets, and there's proper ratios of overhead to data packets. Um, and IPA also, in, in the last tab of IPA, at the end of the workflow, it'll show you recommendations to let you know if your network is optimized or not. So optimized network configuration based on those tips that IPA will give you. ISP techs and installers. This use case is all about going in, installing, verifying, getting a deliverable that, you know, check the box, I went in and did this, and then hopefully never coming back if everything is, goes well. Because truck rolls out to a residence or out to a, a, a commercial business are extremely expensive. We want to minimize those. Um, we want to get it right the first time. So these ISP techs and installers will use Wi-Fi and Channelizer to find the proper placement of the AP. That's, that's everyone. Channel placement is you know, the bare minimum that you are going to need to do here. Um, create a birth certificate of the network. This is a term that uh, I borrowed from another, another uh, of our sales guides. He talks about the report the, from Report Builder as a birth certificate of a network installation. So you install your network, you run a report, spit it out, hand it to your client, hand it to your boss, and you're done. Uh, this, person, this ISP tech will also use IPA to go into the next, kind of take it to the next level if they've run Channelizer and there's no interference but the network is still suffering. They can then look at it from a packet perspective. Next use case. Uh, net, network system integrator and or managed services provider. These guys are, it's really important since they need to justify billable hours. Uh, report builder is extremely important here as well. Um, they'll use wi by Channelizer to get a snapshot of air quality, you know, how clear your band is, which channels are clear, which of the lesser, or which of the three evils, can I choose the lesser of the evils back when I was talking about the three different types of interference. Uh, channel planning for an installation, 1611, 1611, repeating in your channel plan. Um, snapshots by time of day, expectation setting. They can go right in at the busiest time of the day, look at the spectrum then, build a report then, and have something accurate to look at because someone's complaining about a signal dropping at the busiest time of day when everyone is in the break room at lunchtime running their microwaves. Um, it's going to look very, very different than an after-hours time when the tech can come in and everything's empty, there's no interference. And they say, well, what were you complaining about? This is all clear. So the report builder is really essential then because you can go in during the business time of day, you know, run a report, give it to the client, give it to, file it away in the tribal knowledge of your company as well, and then they can, um, if the client calls again, look up that report, find out, you know, oh, that was the busiest time of day, that's why. See and mitigate interference, just like a, this is a common theme with Wi-Fi by Channelizer. Um, and as I talked about, document results to establish either a, a, a baseline for performance right after an install or to document just the fixes that you did. If you, if you did roll a truck, come in, make some fixes, then take a post, a post fix survey and actually show the client the difference. IPA. This is a similar situation as the enterprise IT, or the, the ISP tech, excuse me. Um, if, they've in, if they've eliminated interference, or at least got it to the best of their ability eliminated, um, and signals are still dropping, they can fire up IPA to look at it from the packet level and see, well, the interference wasn't the problem. Uh, what is the problem? Is there, are there some legacy devices? Are we having a lot of retransmits? Etc. So I'm done with the slides. Um, Richard, do we have time for quick demos, or should we uh, take it off air and have people download the trials? So we can do both of those. Um, what I was thinking is, why don't you bring up a demo while we're talking? We'll take a few questions um, while you're loading up the information so that we can get a few of the 
listeners' um, questions answered. Does that make sense? I think so. Let me go ahead and bring up Channelizer. So while Lyle's doing that, I wanted to answer the one question I get on every webinar, um, and that is there was some useful information and there was some information on the slides that went by too quickly and I wanted to see it again. How can I see sure. it? How can I get a copy of the slides? And the answer to that question, I, I'm going to answer it for you, um, is that we are recording this event. And the event itself uh, will be available on demand in two locations. Um, it will be available on StreakWave's website if you go to www.streakwave.com and then just pull up the manufacturer MetaGeek. It will be on the top tabs under videos. You'll be able to listen to any or all of the webinar however you wish. It's on demand. Um, it and many other uh, webinars and training media and videos that we do are also available on uh, StreakWave's uh, YouTube channel. Very simple, just youtube.com slash streakwave. And there are all kinds of, of topics that you can look at there. Um, this webinar will be present on that uh, board as well. And you can pull it up and, and look at it as you wish. Uh, we usually take about a day or two to get it edited properly so that all the volume is correct and all the contact information is there. But watch for it in about 24 hours, and we'll have it up for you. So um, how are you doing with that? Looks like you've got some color coming up, so I assume it's yep. the start of the show. There we go. Look at that. So this is Channelizer. Um, it is the, the Wi-Fi and Channelizer. It's our, it's our spectrum analysis solution. Um, I'll go ahead and do a quick demo. I've, I've been talking a lot about Report Builder, so I'd like to just kind of highlight you know, how easy it is to generate a report. Uh, and if we have time, we can talk about IPA and Insider for Office, but if not, we can certainly take it offline and um, I can supply any materials that anybody needs. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, et cetera. So if we're looking at Channelizer, let's just quickly go through it and I can show you how to generate a report. Over here is the uh, waterfall navigation. It's kind of like a DVR playback. Um, it allows you to go back in time during your recording. Oh, and by the way, I, uh, this is a, a pre-recording. When you open up Channelizer, there's some sample recordings for you. This is so you can actually get some use out of it before you do a live survey, um, before you're at a client site and you are walking around and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, we want to give you a chance to learn the program first. So these are just some recordings that we've collected or that have users have submitted. Um, I chose this one right here, hidden security cameras. So that's what's loading. Um, so you can see here on, this is the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Um, you can see that in the session manager. If you had a 5 gigahertz session and a 2.4 gigahertz session, you could bounce back between them because the Weiss by DBX will scan both bands. And it is um, AC compatible as well. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget that. IPA also is AC compatible, 802.11 AC. Um, so if we have something interesting here that we want to look at, let's look at this tiny spectrum event. Let me drag my slider up. There was a spectrum event here happening that was interesting. And I think something is something about this is interesting. It's maybe an interferer. Maybe some of my APs are on channel six right here. This is a recording, so it's not going to show live networks. Um, but if it was live, you'd see a network here if I had an AP on channel 6, which is one of the standard channels. This is probably going to be interfering with it. So if I want to add a note, and I apologize for the slow resolution, my uh, VM is doing something weird and it's mirroring my display instead of projecting it to the second display. Um, but what this little dialog box is, it says add note. I can add a note, um, AV trans. Submitter, question mark. Uh, hey, client, this is that security camera that we were talking about. And it's messing with your spectrum. Or it's messing with your Wi-Fi, excuse me. We can see it in the spectrum. So that note is saved in the Notes tab. AV transmitter, hey, client, this is here. You can also um, add, if you took a picture, of whatever was happening, you can add an image file into the note too. And the notes are, are marked on the waterfall navigation so you can remember where that interesting spectrum event was happening. 
So say I wanted to create a report. I'm going to go up to the Report Builder menu. And Report Builder, um, keep in mind, is a separate software accessory from Channelizer. Uh, Streakwave does sell it bundled together. So Channelizer plus Report Builder is a very, very common bundle. Um, that's the one we recommend. Uh, occasionally, there is use cases where you don't need the Report Builder, but we highly recommend it. Um, and if you if you purchase the that software accessory, it'll just show up and it'll look like it's totally native to Channelizer. This this means that you do have the license there, the Report Builder menu. So I want to add all blocks. And what add all blocks means is that this density pane, that's a block. This waterfall view, that's a block. Um, any of these interferes, channels, tables, utilization, those are all blocks that can be added to Report Builder. And uh, I'm going to hit Add All Blocks. And go to the Report Builder tab. Here's my report. I can enter my company logo, company name. Uh, and as you, these are all the modules of the report, and as you edit those, it'll update live onto here. The pre-filler text that is generated is um, just explainer text. It, it was written by MetaGeek and it just tells you what's going on in this block essentially. But if you have an interesting thing that you want to point out to your client or, or to whoever, maybe you're the field tech and you want to give this report back to your team lead back at the office and they're the ones working on the project, um, you go in here to density graph, this little pencil, universal symbol for edit. Here's the pre-filler text that MetaGeek wrote. We want to say something interesting happened here. And then go back, and your custom text is there. You can also delete any of this that you want. So you can make your report as long as or as short as you want. Uh, and the cool thing about the report, not only is it customizable, but it's all within the time span you selected. So you don't have to have a huge report explaining all this or a meaningless chart. It doesn't really mean anything to the client because it's showing uh, it's showing a ton of stuff that's going on. In this recording, it's, it was a purposeful recording, so not a lot is changing uh, throughout time. But if you turned on a microwave, if you turned it off, if someone came in with a signal jammer, hopefully not, hopefully that never happens, um, your report will be consistent with the time frame. And then... Could, yeah. you, could you walk them through how physically this works? Because obviously this is reporting data. Um, tell them a little bit about the difference between the hardware aspect of it and the software aspect of it. So they're, they're using it on a laptop and they're walking around. Oh, sure. how, how does it work? Certainly. <clears throat> so you, I'm going to use the Wi-Spy DBX as an example. It's the most popular Wi-Spy. Uh, so you plug your Wi-Spy into your computer, into your laptop, um, and it, we are running it on a window, uh, Windows VM. We run Macs at the office. Um, so Windows VM works beautifully. Um, you can also use it on a Windows laptop, obviously. Uh, plug the Wi-Spy in. Um, and the Wi-Spy does come with uh, a clip. So it will clip onto the top of your laptop with a USB cord. Um, fire up Channelizer and just do a walkthrough of your building. Um, and you can add, like I talked about the little notes, you can add notes to yourself to kind of remind yourself where you were during this point in the survey. Uh, and just watch the spectrum fill in. So I'm not going to say that report, but I can export it as a PDF. So you'll watch it fill in. I'm going to hit play. In this example, the person wasn't moving. This was just this is just a training example. But if I'm moving around and I see other APs come into view, You'll, see, you'll start to see different colors drawn on this spectrogram. The blue here means that there's stuff in the background, but it's not, um, it's not happening very frequently, so it's probably not going to be an issue for you. These examples, these are very clear-cut examples of interference. They're bright red, so that means it's happening a lot. Um, and this, the, the y-axis here is an amplitude. So as you're walking around, you can see things come into play, and it'll start to, it, it kind of just colors it for you. And you start to see red show up. You start to get interested, maybe concerned if it's overlapping with an AP. Add notes as you're going through. Um, and then right at the end of the survey, or I, I guess let me back up one. As you're going through, you can also look at interferers. If you don't necessarily have it memorized what each signal looks like, what type of device might be interfering, 
uh, we have an interferers library that you can use to uh, go through and identify the interferers. So, so the, the we, interesting thing there is, is you're starting to see things that are non-Wi-Fi interferences. So you're walking around at one time. They may occur sporadically. So maybe mm -hmm. somebody uses a microwave at around noon for lunchtime and you didn't measure in that time frame. So does it make sense to do this several times a day? I would say go in, um, go in when the client or whoever is complaining that their signal is dropping. So if they're, they're complaining about it at noon during lunchtime, then you don't want to go in after hours. If possible, go in at the busiest time of the day when the network is really um, at its peak and, and carrying the highest load. Um, and, and that's when you'll probably see you know, the most interference. Um, I would say, I mean, the, the more often you do this, the better in case interferers change. But I go in at the busiest time of day, just do a whole sweep. You don't need to do your analysis right then. Depends on you know, what kind of time crunch you're on. The cool thing about this is that the Wi-Fi hardware device will save this as a Wi-Fi capture. It's a WSX file. Um, you can email it to you know, someone back of the office. So maybe they're more trained in Channelizer. They want to do some deeper analysis on it. Leave them some notes in, the, in this, this notes section here. Um, and, and maybe they can decode these non-Wi-Fi interferers. Um, and if you have networks going, again, this is a recording, so the, the live networks won't show up. But if it was a live recording, you'll see the access points overlaid on here. So you can get a sense of, you know, in the client's deployment, what kind of non-Wi-Fi interference is there. Like in this case, there's AV transmitters. Or what kind of uh, Wi-Fi interference, like adjacent channel interference. Maybe one of the APs it was set to a non-standard channel. You can see the interference right then. So one of our listeners asked, um, in looking at this, they, they use Cisco equipment. And you mentioned mm -hmm. Cisco before. Is there a way to access Cisco Clean Air um, and then sort of go through the APs that way? Yes. Yeah, so you can access, um, and I'm trying to remember the exact, the Cisco Clean Air series. It's on our site exactly which APs are supported. Um, but you can connect to a Cisco Clean Air AP or a controller. And it based, at that point, when you're in, when the AP is in monitor mode, it acts like a Wi-Fi, and it will gather or when you put it into Channelizer, it, Channelizer reads it like a Wi-Fi. So you add the CCF files from Cisco Clean Air. You connect, you know, you connect to your Cisco Clean Air access point. You add the CCF files into Channelizer, and then Channelizer treats those like a Wi-Fi recording. So if your client is in a different country or maybe just across town and you don't want to roll the truck to go visit them and they're complaining of a drop signal, but you can access their Cisco deployment, then load those in there, and from the AP's perspective, the AP will show you what's going on with the spectrum from, from where that AP is installed. So it gives you um, a lot of flexibility. And I imagine with Report Builder, you're able to do both sides of the house. So if you, you want to uh, go up front and show a project uh, that you can work on, you can go in and, and do a, a preliminary study and show them, look, what, what we can identify as well as afterwards uh, for management and maintenance. Yes, that is an extremely useful um, use case of Report Builder. Uh, we, we recommend, you know, if it, in, our, in our dream world, no deployment would happen until there was a preliminary RF survey done. <laughs> so you'd walk through with Wi-Fi and Channelizer, get a sense of the existing interference that is just inherent in, in the building. Maybe you're the landlord of the building has security cameras installed, and you want a map of that before you even install, before you even deploy your network. And then, you know, do your deployment. Uh, purposefully design your channel plan, and then just like you were saying, Richard, afterwards take take a so you took a before report, then take an after the fact survey to verify your installation. Hand that report to the client and say, look, here are the issues that we already knew about that we didn't have control over. Um, maybe that security camera has to stay there, can't move it. Just so you know, there's interference here, and that'll all be documented in your report. So I mean, it, it kind of it it ju it helps establish credibility for you, and it kind of lets you off the hook for stuff that you can't control, like that maybe that landlord won't move that security camera, and there's there's um, inter so, there's going to be interference there. 
I want to jump in for a second to Josh Kwok, who's also on the line. He's our uh, Streetwaves Chief Technology Officer, but he's also got another role that I think plays into this. He he trains people in, in um, Wi-Fi and in, in the use of wireless equipment all over the world. And Josh, I wonder if you might uh, tell us a little bit about where you've seen from the students that come to your class how they could use this product. Are you there? Yeah, um, yeah I'm here. Um, so. I know uh, um, one of the biggest things, like Lyle was saying, they need a way to visualize things they can't see, right? When it's mm -hmm. RF, right? It's not like uh, uh, this way. It's like it's like music, right? If you if uh, if someone else is cranking their speaker, you can always hear it, but if you can't hear, you can't see it. You need a tool like this to identify it. Uh, a big, a common mistake a lot of people do is they bring up a standard Wi-Fi scanner like the ones that come on an Android phone or you know just a laptop, a little simple wireless scanner, which just tells them about Wi-Fi. Uh, they don't tell them whether there's a lot of interference on it. They don't tell them if there's a lot of traffic. They also don't see you know, non-Wi-Fi devices. So um, the uh, spectrum analyzer is almost a must, uh, yeah. a must have uh, for at least every company. Right? Every company's got to at least have one. Uh, as a as a you know as a first step, of course the next step I noticed that um, when they need to do a little deeper diving, that hey everything looks great no interference but why are um, why is our performance bad? That's when I noticed they have to uh, get into the IPA and the air PCAP, uh, the the packet analysis. Uh, so I've I've seen that uh, used heavily uh, when they have you know exhausted uh, analyzing layer one. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if Lyell has any to add to that or, or, or point out, you know, when to use an IPA versus channelizer. But my, my, my view is um, you always start with channelizer and the, and the wise by DBX, right, the DBX that does both yep. hands. Uh, and then usually, I say, I will say 90% of the time, you identify the problem there. And then for the more advanced uh, uh, analysis, then go to the layer two, the packet analysis. So, I, yeah, Josh possible? said it. He, oh, go ahead. I was just wondering if it's possible to bring up uh, the the packet uh, software so that they can see that as well, or is that uh, loaded on your Definitely. system? Definitely, it is loaded. Oh, I, as long as my VMware cooperates. Phew. Okay. I can bring that up. Yeah, Josh <laughs> nailed it. Um, a lot of people think that Wi-Fi. Uh, and Channelizer are, is just a Wi-Fi scanner, and that's not true. Um, it, it, is, it is also a Wi-Fi scanner, but that's not the beauty of it. The beauty of it is that it will see everything in the spectrum. It doesn't care if it's Wi-Fi or non-Wi-Fi. Um, your wireless card is only going to show you things that it recognizes, which are APs. That's it. Um, and it won't see that third type of interference, which is non-Wi-Fi interference. Let's load. Lecture hall. So as Josh is saying, um, if you've gone through layer one and you've established, excuse me, you've established that you have um, as clear as possible uh, of your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, your APs are on the right channel, um, you've mitigated any Wi-Fi or non-Wi-Fi interference, and you're still getting drop signals, um, fire up IPA. IPA is the packet analysis software from, from MetaGeek. Um, spectrum analysis is Wi-Spy and Channelizer. Packet analysis is IPA. And you can get, you can use IPA, it runs uh, PCAP files. And the most common source of getting PCAP files is uh, from AirPCAP NX. It's a USB packet sniffer. Uh, and they, they work really well together. You can also uh, capture packets with um, with your Mac, and uh, but yeah, yeah, NX is the most common way of getting it. So once you've got your packet capture, uh, and again, I've I've just preloaded a recording. This isn't a live recording. Uh, up here at the top of IPA, well, I guess I'll talk about the workflow first. Learn tab, you can get quickly familiar with what's going on in IPA, uh, and Capture is what we just did. We loaded our, pack, our PCAP file. Next is the Visualize tab. So the Visualize tab is uh, really handy to just let you get, you know, just a bunch of colors 
up, up front for you. Uh, once you learn about what different colors mean, so if you go up here in the subframe types, the colors are all here. They're also in the user guide. You can kind of learn about it. Uh, once you kind of establish in your head purple, management, orange is control, blue is data, uh, and the intensity of the color is just different types of those subframe types. Oh, click out of that. Um, so you can see here already you're seeing a lot of purple, so you know that those are management frames. Orange here, you can see that they're control frames, blue is data. Um, IPA is not interested in looking at the packets themselves because you can use Wireshark for that. Uh, and we, we designed IPA as a complementary product to, to Wireshark. Uh, Wireshark is great for looking at actual packets and what they say. Um, IPA was designed purposefully not to look at the packets, but to look at the types of packets and the amounts of packets. So you can spot trends really quickly. Um, we built IPA all around the idea of a multi-layer pie chart. We call them tree peas, T-R-E-E-P-I-E-S. Tree pie. I don't know why we call it tree pie. <laughs> uh, so these tree peas are interactive, and it allows you to allows you to go down into um, either if you're looking at airtime up here, or bytes, or packets. All the tree pies will adjust depending on what you're interested in. Let's look at airtime. Um, this slider here is kind of like the navigation, the waterfall navigation in Channelizer. It allows you to go down to an interesting packet traffic event. Loading, loading, loading. And, well, if, you, if you have Report Builder, this stuff can be um, pushed out to Report Builder as well? So this is different than the Report Builder accessory for Channelizer, but you can generate reports. Um, it's more of a, a modular process. You can copy uh, this stuff to the clipboard. So you can copy these charts to a clipboard and then um, assemble your report in you know, an RTF or a word processing program. These will these snapshot out as images. So you can still generate reports, same types of data, um, but the report builder engine or wizard, report builder wizard, is just available in Channelizer. With IPA, you can get the same types of data, but you just it's just a screenshot. Uh, it's like a clipped screenshot type process. But these are so still... Have, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to cut you off there, not because I want to. I think there's a lot more to see and do, but we did promise the listeners an hour, so I'm, I'm going to wind up Certainly. up here and tell people where they can find out more information about this if they're interested. We hope you are. There's a lot of information here, and I know it's hard to digest in just one hour, but um, there's a wide range of tools for MetaGeek's products that, that can uh, go at light depth or as heavy a depth as you need, and as you can see, it can save your clients or yourself a lot of effort and a lot of stress if things aren't working correctly with your network. It can allow you the, the benefit of finding those invisible aspects that are very important. As I said, this uh, webinar will be is recorded and will be on demand on both StreakWave's YouTube channel, which is just streakwave uh, youtube.com slash streakwave, or at streakwave.com and look up the, the manufacturer MetaGeek. Uh, Streakwave is a full-line provider, distributor of MetaGeek products, and we do have the bundles of these products available. Um, for those of you who have been on the call, you will get an email from us on some special opportunities, so please, uh, there'll be a heads up for those people who um, have registered and come on to the webinar. You will get an email about a special offer. There have been a bunch of questions about some specific features. Um, on each one of the products. We will be getting back to you individually to let you know the answer to those questions. We don't want to let everybody hang, but I also want to keep us within the hour that we promised. It has been a great pleasure to have uh, Lyle um, present to us today. Um, thank you to Josh Kwok for adding some perspective on the technical side. Um, all of these products are available through Streakwave. You can reach us by phone at 888-604-5234. That's the 800 number into our system. Or just come on streakwave.com or give one of our sales associates a call and we can give you more information. Streakwave webinars um, is available uh, all the time on demand. And we do periodic presentations for education and for product launches. And we are, have and are very pleased to have uh, MetaGeek in our family. So thank you for your time today. Thank you to our presenters. And thank you to all of you who attended. We look forward to having you at the next one. And join us then. Thank you very much.